Hi, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk about Nasara. What about debt? Coming right up. Okay, so I know this gets said a billion times. So do me a favor, can you just like, subscribe, send this video to your friends, promise you it's gonna be helpful. So here's what we're gonna talk about. People are asking this question of me all the time. Now there are some, I'm gonna first deal with some of the other issues. Some people are saying, well, all the interest is paid back to you, but not the debts. Well, that is the dumbest thing in the whole world. I'm sorry to be rude, but that is the case. Now, why do these people say this process here? Because they haven't answered the question of fairness. Okay? I had a guy that I was talking to about debt forgiveness. And uh, he was like, well, that's not fair. I pay my debts. And I'm like, I get you. And they said, have you ever heard the story from your mom? Life's not fair? He goes, well, I'm like, it was so bad. So I'm like, okay, let me ask you this. Is God fair? And he goes, yeah, God's fair. And I was like, the whole room, I mean, this, by the way, this room in here, like 25 people in the room, they're like, what? God's not fair. Hey, see, my fairness is that all of you guys need to give me all of your money so I can have everything and you don't know. I've been doing more for, what you know, like this is what fairness is to people. It's, it's opinion about what my position is versus what yours is. See, fairness is, is, is so opinionated and so arbitrary that it's not about fairness, okay? This whole movement is about justice. It is not about fair for you. So we're gonna kinda show you a couple ways in here that you gotta think about. First off, this is just dumb. It's, I'm not even gonna fully answer that one. In a, in a way, but we're gonna talk about it in a slightly different pattern. So are the debts forgiven? And the answer is absolutely. Why are they forgiven? Well, let's first talk about, talk about which ones. Business to business. By the way, you go, why do you say biz? Because that's the easy way to say business. Okay, so business to business. So let's say you have an S corporation to a C corporation, okay? So I'm an S corporation, and let's just say I had a building like the building that I'm in, and those guys have many buildings, so let's say their corporation type is a C type. Business to business, this is coming from all bank, banking kind of issues. Okay, so uh, it's a property, for instance, very much into one of those things that the debt forgiveness will happen. Second type would be business to personal. Now, business to personal is really homes, cars, credit card, and here's an interesting one, student loans. Now, student loans are not necessarily a business. Sometimes it is, but other times it's not. It is actually through the government that gives you a loan. And you go, okay, so first off, these loans, did I just basically cover almost every loan out there? Yes. What loan did I not cover? I just heard about this one five minutes before we started this thing. It's owner finance. Let's say you, you're gonna buy the building that your business is in, okay? 
and you're in the building and they are going to do owner finance. So you couldn't finance it for whatever reason. So what they decided to do is we'll let, we'll finance it for you. We own the building outright. We're going to finance it for you. Would owner finance get into the system? No. He's, he's doing a nice thing for you and owner financing. Okay. That is in essence, a person to person loan. It, it frankly is person to person. Now, if your parents gave you a loan, my parents have given me loan over the years. And if they've given me a loan, that is a person to person loan. That's not going to be forgiven. No, it's not even on the system. So is debt forgiveness for all of these? Yes. Now here's the, here's another question that I get all the time. Let's erase that. Did you get that? Okay. So let's get into the next phase of this question. Cause this one comes up all the time. I'm gonna put it in red. Why? Would they allow, allow this? Okay. So you're saying, why would the rich, which in essence, not all of them, but, but many of the rich, why would the bank of Chase bank or the, or the, you know, government or anyone allow this? This is a big question that I hear all the time. And I'm like, Dude, here's the deal. Trump was actually working on this whole point and he used something called executive order 13818. And if you have been deemed crimes against humanity, the property that you have is seized and you can't transfer it. And there's like eight different kind of statements of transfer, borrow, move around. You can't do any of that. These people have had crimes against humanity quite a bit. So the big fed bankers, many of the government kind of agencies and the sickos in Hollywood and media all have been a part of this thing. They are deleted from this process, which is a huge number of this, of why would they allow, how are they going to allow this? There's a secondary point of saying, why would they allow it? Oops, let me draw that down a little bit lower. How it's going to be go through. So Trump actually, when you look at the 14th amendment and the fourth section, it's a little confusing that you go through. This is a post world, uh, post civil war kind of conversation. And basically what it does is talks about contract law and it talks about debts that, that if, if debts come on you, can the debts be used against you in essence? It's in, in when you kind of go this a lot further and by the way, trusts, when you sign into a trust, if you read everything about trusts, there's a book called Weiss, the Weiss uh, dictionary of trusts. It talks about the 14th amendment over and over and over again. Go research this. Don't believe what I say. Go research about what trusts are. And the, the basis of trusts is contract law. Here's what contract law says. In a contract, both sides, the debtor and the creditor, must be of sound mind. Okay. They're smart enough. I mean, they're not, we're not talking about someone who has dementia and got into a loan that she didn't really understand what she was getting into. And they also have to both have full understanding of what they actually did. And, and here's the point that that's been happening in the background. If a behavior is illegal, let me give you this one. The first amendment under the 10th section actually stipulates that debt must be paid 
by gold and silver. Debt has to be something with a value-backed point. When we have had the fiat currency, it is a debt-based point. You cannot pay debt with debt. Now, if you've listened to my videos in the past, you'll actually hear a story. So I actually got into a loan with this company. And so it's a company, it's a company. They're a C corporation, I'm an S corporation. They were doing a loan. Great. So I want to say it's like $95,000 that we were doing the loan for. And the payment normally was supposed to be $1,800. They were doing simple interest, okay? They were not doing compound interest. They did simple interest kind of loan. Great, five, five years, 5%, five if I remember right. And, um, and I want to say the, the amount was like $1,850. But I'd had this loan before, so I really liked, I think it was like $1,950 that I used to pay. So I was like, can't we just do the same number and pay it off early? And like, yeah, we can do that. And so because this was a, a group that does my cost of goods, so I said, well, you know, how, how do you want me to pay this? I mean, do you want to, you want to take it out of the checking account? Do you want to me write a check at the end of the month? What, what do you want to do? And they're like, well, we have your credit card on file. Now, why would I have a credit card on file? Because I pay my cost of goods on the credit card on file. And then I just pay it off at the end of the month. Put it on the credit card, use the miles, pay it off. It's just I, I've just used this system for a long time. They're like, we could just use the credit card. Fine with me. So we all agreed. Everything's like, we'll take it off. We'll take it off. Do you mind if we take it off on the third of the month? Great. Fine with me. So 1950 on the third of the month. My accountant, who actually is in Washington State, she's freaking out. She's like, what? You can't pay debt by debt. And she was, she was thinking on the, the First Amendment, the 10th tenth, tenth section of the amendment, that basically says debt has to be paid by gold. Or, and she's talking about a debt, a debt vehicle of a credit card paid off, paying off a debt. But the reality is, is that no lawyer in the past has actually shown that debts have been paid illegally through this system. And you can't move in this kind of system that we are, we are in. And no one stopped it because the Fed and the bankers have loaded the courts. They've loaded the governmental systems. They've loaded, you know, the big businesses around. They've loaded, they've got the banks. They've got the, they've got the judges. They've got the whole thing all the way locked down. And so we've been in debt slavery because of this. So why would they allow it? So, so Trump started this part. He also set up this, this little thing, which is the basis of Nasara. In the Constitution, it stipulates this. Meaning, if you are a part of Congress today, and you pass a law that says all white people are bad, go through Senate. Well, yeah, all bad white people and all Asians are bad. And then the president signs that into law. The court system has to go, wait a second. You can't say white people and Asian people are bad by, by executive decree. You can't do it by executive order. You can't do it by passing it through the House and Senate. The court systems are the balance. That's the check and balance of the gorgeous part of the system that John Adams helped to create with Jefferson. <clears throat> and what that is, is this cool part. Here's what, here's what they set up. If the court systems put through and see a, a, a fraudulent type of bill, their job is to go, you know what? You don't get to make it. And they can kill that bill. That's the check and balance of the system. And that's been eliminated for 107 years with the Federal Reserve. Do you know that there was a guy, Charles Lindbergh's father, in 1916, and the House of Representatives went against the Fed and has had a whole lot. I've read, I've read the the uh, the proposal of this thing, and he and he lost roundly, lost, and then got thrown out of out of Congress because he wasn't a part of the system. But Trump is killing the system, and that's the cool thing in there. And they've been doing it ever since the PPP loans. Now. I know you. I know you're going, but that doesn't answer all my questions. Okay. So here's the next part of this this section that you have to understand. 
What about how are we going to pay for it? So the people ask this next question. They go, how, well, who, or basically they're saying who is going to pay for it? So they're thinking of like IRS, you know, taxation, you know, sales tax, and, and ultimately you have to pay for it. So here's the part. The 14th Amendment in the fourth section actually talks about the national debt. It is the illegal part. But when you understand the nature of the Fed and how it's working, that is all illegal all the way through and through. So contracts are also taking part of that. Compound interest is illegal in the nature. And we have the nature of paying debts by not debt is the only way that it's supposed to happen. So debts by something gold and silver, precious metal kind of thing. That is a legal form of tender. But what they have is a fiat currency that is a debt currency that is paying out debts, which is a cyclical point. Okay, so who pays for this? And that's where the unique thing that most people don't understand. First off, Trump's first term. Was to, and we're not going to talk about the Jasara thing because I don't want to get into the other nations and their thing because it's not relevant to this. Okay, I know you might go, please answer it, please answer it. But basically, the Nassara, I mean, the Nassara thing is basically along the same line. What we're spending time on is Nassara. So what he did is that he started. By the way, that that executive order I just quoted to one three eight one eight. Get this, December of twenty seventeen. He's in his, he's barely started his first term, not more than 10, 11 months later, he's already got an executive order and he's killed him right then. That's the brilliance of the system that you don't catch. So he's utilizing Nasara. So you say, how is he paying for it? Two different mechanisms. They started to take back things from the cabal. The money from the Vatican, has been illegally obtained in many ways. Switzerland, they have taken out much money from the people over the years, including World War II. It's kept in the dumbs, the deep underground military bases. Another section of it is called the City of London. Now, this is kind of confusing because you're going, wait, London. No, it's a one square mile of London. And really, it's underground. And lastly is D.C. All of these things, Washington, D.C., all of these things are outside of the system. They're sovereign agencies. Each one of these have been sovereign, and they've been setting themselves up outside the taxation system, outside of the legal system. And so each one of these have, have stolen, I mean, trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars. And they have part of the money. And we're taking that from them in the 13818. So that was the first part of it. The second part of that is the White Hats. Now I talk about them, oops, sorry. I talk about them as the anti-cabal. Now you might never have heard that statement before, but this is how I came about this through, I think it was back in 2012 when I first was coming into it because I heard about the anti-cabal. And I was like, anti-cabal, what? These people have way more money than you ever understood than the cabal have ever had. You've never met one of these people. You frankly have never really met many of these. Although Soros is one of those, okay? I'm not saying you walk around and go, hey, I rub shoulders with that dude. Okay, here's what happens. And I had a, a conversation with a friend of mine years and years ago that, that talked to me all about the anti-cabal. And I was like, wait a second, they're gonna do these humanitarian things with you. How are they gonna do it? What? It, it, it didn't click with me. And if you've listened to my story, I've talked about this a bit. 
And I was like, how much money do they have? He goes, you actually asked that same, some guy asked the same question. There was a hundred different groups in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, a meeting hall. So there's probably a couple hundred people, at least 300 people. And he said, um, he said, so one guy asked the question, I know how much you're going to give us, but can you tell me how much these anti-cabal families, some people call them the dragon families. I don't fully know. And it's not relevant, okay, on that one. Because you're never going to find out enough information about these. He said, how much do they have? He goes, sit back and come up with a number. And my friend actually said, Will, had said $1.5 trillion that, that he thought that these families had. He goes, put about four or five zeros on the end of it, and then you're close. Now, some of you, instantaneously, when you hear me, you're going to go, that's wrong, that's false, I've never heard of that stuff before. How many things in the world have you not heard about? How many things have you not heard about? And then you research it and you find out, but it's not there. Why? Because Google has been knocking it off, okay? All of these idiots have been killing this information from you, trying to share this with you. So who's paying for it? It's these two organizations, in essence, we're taking it from them and these things are set aside. This is how they're paying for it. Okay, next step. Is how does this work for the different banks? Now this will be on one of my other videos, so I'm gonna go over this one just a little bit with you. Okay, let's say we have a small bank over here that is, not a, that is not a cabal bank. Yes, they're hooked into the Fed because they have to be hooked into the Fed. They're not allowed to go any other direction. And then we have something like Chase or BOA or any one of those idiot bank, you know, gross organizations. Okay. Let's just say for the heck of it, you have a $100,000 loan over here. You also have a $100,000 loan on this side. So these are both loans, okay? Let's just say for the heck of it, you got in savings $10,000 here, and you also have $10,000 in savings here. So as I started to study this and ask the questions, here's what I found. What, were, what happens to the Fed, the Fed is going toward bankruptcy. And you go, how can they put bankruptcy through? Well, guess what? Bankruptcy of the Fed has happened over and over again. It's actually a bankruptcy of the government. They don't get bankrupt. They just bankruptcy a portion of it. 1913. The Fed starts in 1933 is a bankruptcy. What? When we went off the gold standard. The second bankruptcy is 1971, the gas shortage. That was when the rest of the world was still pulling into the, into the bank, into the banking system, and they were getting gold back or silver back. Well, that one went away too. Another time frame was about 2000, okay, which culminated in 9-11. But everyone has known about this for a very long time, that 2020 was going to be another bankruptcy phase. And we're still dealing with the end of the cabal. Okay. So what happens is that these puppies are in bankruptcy. So here's the point. You have a loan for a piece of property, whatever it is. Don't, you know, don't get sideways on me if I, you know, I'm using a term. I'm just trying to give you an ex explanation. So for instance, both of these loans are written in compound interest and have to be deleted. So if we have, let me pull this up. Let me erase this over here. We have these things like the St. Germain Fund, or we have the Rodriguez Fund, or we have these cabal monies that have taken huge amounts of money. Do they pay the cabal bankers anything? 
No, they give them nothing. Simple. They don't get anything for it. They just have to write it off because we're putting them in bankruptcy. See, we're part of a bankruptcy, but they're flipping the switch. The bankruptcy is flipping over. Because, by the way, the $31.5 trillion is also part of the bankruptcy, too. You're never going to pay for that. You're never going to have to deal with the IRS. The IRS money all goes toward the $31.5 trillion in the Federal Reserve's debts. So it kills this piece off by bankruptcying them. But you cannot steal this piece of money from you. It's called an asset. Now, it's an asset of, of the Chase or the BOA, okay? Or we'll just say it, the big bank, okay? So that's an asset, but yet they don't get, they don't get access to the asset anymore. It's frozen information. That's what, Executive Order 13818. So by Executive Order 13818, they have frozen the assets, let me write it with a different thing. So they've frozen the assets so that you have to have time to come over there. So one of the things that, that we are still like investigating how this might happen, but I believe that you'll have about 90 days after, sorry, 90 days, I'm writing that differently, 90 days after Trump gets into office and Nassar is actually announced, they'll say, you know, Joe, please come over here and get your money out. We will send it to any small bank that you wish to. We're like, well, I already have a small bank over here. Okay, we'll take the ten thousand dollars. You'll have, you'll have twenty thousand dollars, because it's an asset. Because the bankruptcy does not allow the asset to go through. Okay, the loan, they got to eat it. That's what happens in real bankruptcy. Those people have to eat it. This is going to be so cool when you catch it. And anyone who's been any level of bankruptcy knows this whole process. But what happens to this thing that this bank has done nothing bad? They're not a bad bank in that way. Well, the, these different funds are paying $100,000. So the small bank is flushed with $100,000 of cash. But you don't have to do, this is an asset for the bank. You don't have to do anything with them. There's nothing wrong with that. If you wanted to walk out of that bank with that $10,000 in cash, you get to walk free and clear because it's still your money, okay? This is, this is in the asset and debt, you know, kind of system, okay? Looking, we're talking about the balance sheet, okay? So when they pay off this thing, the bank is flush with cash. So you, all you have to take care of is these two sections, the 10,000 over here and the 100,000 over here, but you just guarantee it. So they become, these funds will be guarantors of this amount of money and they'll say, where do you want it to go? Because by the way, all the gross bankers are gone. You just have some tellers and some bank managers and they're watching this asset flow off. And so you'll see this other small bank. Well, they're going to have flush with cash. What's going to happen on the back end is so fascinating that you won't realize. Now, I'm not going to get fully into this, but I'm going to share it with this way. As this loan goes away, they're going to be flush with a bunch of in, internal cash. Now, you can't, see people ask, well, I'll, I'll give you a little bit here. So are they ever going to do loans again? Yeah, they'll probably do loans because unless you have $200,000 for your house or $400,000 for that house or whatever, you know, the, the real price will be. And by the way, prices will fall. It's not like 1950s pricing. Go to my videos about that one. Okay. But you want to have, a, you want to get a loan for a new house. Well, here's what I think is going to occur. I think we're probably going to see a system of oops, a system of some fee. Just make up a number 
Maybe you have to walk in there and you do have to pay $10,000 fee or a $5,000 fee. And you do have to pay a fee to the bank for, for getting your loan. So they make money off this thing. And then there'll be some type of payment, making sure that you can make the payments. So in essence, that's what will future loans might look like. Again, I'm guessing on that one. I'm telling you right now, I'm guessing on it. I don't know how they're going to do it. But there's going to be, because they're still going to have an ability for bank banks to loan for businesses and for personal situations because they need to know how this works. So there's going to have this, but these guys are going to be totally deleted because they're part of the six system. But you got to take about 90 days or some, some particular time frame before you flush out the assets and they're in bankruptcy and gone. That actually exactly how bankruptcy works from a business standpoint. And so the brilliance of the system, why you don't understand this is that you haven't been thinking outside. You've been thinking inside of the matrix of your mind. Watch the matrix movies. It's totally cool. You've been watching inside of here and this is how you've seen everything you see. Well, that's not how it works. Guess what? It's all changing. Let me, let me go backward in time. 1977, the first, very first season I ever watched football. In, in defensive structure, my, my favorite team, because I was in Denver, my favorite team was the 1977 Broncos. They got smacked in the Super Bowl by the Dallas Cowboys, 27 to 10. And in that time frame, the, the Broncos, you had the Broncos, the Raiders, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Dallas Cowboys, the doomsday defense. D the Orange Crush, I mean, they were so amazing. The defense was just, they would wipe you out. But the NFL came in with a new rule. And the rule was pass interference, that you couldn't chuck a guy after five yards. So they changed the whole process and the offenses opened up from the late 70s on. So, I mean, it was fundamental, one of the big, big changes of rules in NFL history. And you're going, why are you talking about that? Because we're about ready to see a fundamental thing change. It is going to mess with your whole perception systems. And you're saying to me, the first thing that you say in your mind, it's never going to happen. It's never, well, guess what? Then we're in communism right now. We might as well go to the hell in a handbasket. We might as well just start the civil war. The answer is not that. If that were the case, don't you think Trump would have been starting a civil war? He never did, never tried to. January 6th is never any of that stuff. That's just ridiculous, false information. The reality is this, this point. This system is going on in some type of form. I'm just giving you an idea. Do I know exactly which one it is? No, but I've been looking at this in a different way and knowing how bankruptcy works. And guess what? You have a president in Trump who has actually been through bankruptcy, I think, three times. He is an economist genius. You didn't have an Eisenhower type of guy, president, like General Flynn. You didn't have a war president. You had an economist president who's actually been through bankruptcy, has been stolen from many times, and he is the perfect guy, the perfect god place guy to bring in a system to wash these guys out. It is going to be so fantastic when you realize it. You're going to go, whoa. The debts kind of fall off your shoulder. You have a gold-backed currency where prices are going to start falling. You're going to be able to get ahead. You're not going to have to worry about taxes and all this other stuff. You have sales tax. That's okay. But there, it's going to be a lot more freeing system. Okay? There's so many cool things out there. I know this doesn't answer every question, but I'm trying to answer as many of them about the debt forgiveness. And it absolutely has to happen because you have to kill off the fiat currency that feeds them. And you have to kill off the secondary portion. The debt is how they take and bind you together. So I hope that helps you understand a lot more about that system. Thanks so much for listening. <music>